prioritize their currency stability, uh, leaving uh, the uh, responsibility for economic uh, stimulation to the fiscal authorities. So um, I expect that trend to actually uh, continue. Uh, I expect the CBN to continue to prioritize their uh, currency stability, and that would mean uh, leaving uh, rates at elevated levels to encourage uh, FBI inflows. But then, do you think the GDP data or inflation data or any of the macroeconomic data that comes out from the National Bureau of Statistics still affects the market? Uh, what are your major concerns? Uh, I think uh, uh, what the uh, data does essentially, like I, I noted, is to uh, um, uh, raise uh, uh, focus or expectations for uh, what the uh, fiscal authorities are meant to do going forward. It more or less uh, puts uh, into perspective the scale of the uh, stimulus that we expect to see from the fiscal side. Uh, and that's going to add uh, some pressure on them to more like fast track their borrowing plans going forward. And also, uh, we've been hearing uh, reports of them trying to more like expand the uh, scale of their proposed borrowing. The whole idea of uh, borrowing about 20 billion in foreign currency uh, there. So I think that's going to add that layer of pressure. Uh, on the on the on the fiscal side, then uh, uh, for yields, like I said, I think for yields, the CBN uh, uh, the CBN's guidance or response to this development is very key, and I expect them to still hold rates at current levels because raising rates uh, will only uh, add pressures on the fiscal side in terms of maybe increasing a debt service because the fiscal side will be now be looking to borrow more aggressively now, like I explained, given the scale of economic deterioration. So I Philip, expect them to want to... Philip, Philip let's, let's, let's take it like this. Of course, you know that the markets actually look to the monetary and the fiscal authorities in terms of pronouncements. And in the last couple of months, uh, this year, in fact, we've seen major pronouncements coming from the monetary policy with regards to the currencies market and, of course, uh, with regards to the monetary policy rate, which was increased in July. So talk to us about how all of this affects the market because believe it or not we have more investors we have investors wanting to come into the uh coming to nigerian economy to invest but they are take they're, they're a little bit cautious at this time because they are looking at the operating environment one and they're also looking at their returns do they would they bring in money that will at the end of the day fizzle away or do they have good returns on their investments i think the other thing boils down to what cbn does about uh, currency and i think they're going to focus on that uh, I think uh, in the last couple of months, we've seen the CBN uh, more like put in place some sort of uh, restrictions. Although the market is supposed to be uh, flexible, uh, beginning from the uh, mid uh, of the year. Uh, but then we discovered that there are still certain restrictions that, that have been in place that have actually deterred some foreign portfolio investment. So for CBN, I expect CBN to focus on currency, try to more like uh, remove some of those restrictions so as to encourage a greater flow of uh, FBI or free flow of uh, foreign capital into the market. Philip, do you have any idea of uh, what the rate on return so far is? Uh, the rate of return depends on the, uh, uh, the duration of the investment you are looking at. If you are looking, say, our 5, 10-year uh, bond yields that are doing lots of about uh, uh, 16%, uh, you will have to compare it to the average rate, uh, average inflation rate for the uh, past 10 months. I think it's doing... Uh, Something around 14, 15%. So you see that it's still a bit uh, narrow. So uh, I think what the CBN will be doing is to more like leave that rate of return. That's talking about the uh, uh, returns on those uh, uh, long dated instruments related to the average inflation rate for the past 10 months. So it's slightly positive going forward. But then we've also seen that uh, outside of the equities market, which has suffered quite a lot in the last couple of trading sessions, we've seen a lot of contraction, investors taking very tepid approach to equities listed on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. The market in the last five days or so has lost almost 200 billion naira. But not the same for the, equity, for the fixed income segment of the market. Treasury bills are still the toast of investors as well as bonds, mm -hmm. even though at its uh, auction last week, the DMO didn't get to sell as much as it offered. Yeah, uh, for the uh, fixed income market, I think uh, the uh, major thing for uh, the CBM now is try as much as possible to uh, leave rates at, at attractive levels. And you want to talk about this, you put into consideration that come December, you expect the Fed to maybe uh, adjust the rates in the U.S. And with yields already rising in response to that expectation, 
you expect CBN to do all it takes to actually leave this at an elevated level, given its uh, stance in spiral two and decision making. So, uh, in order not to place Nigeria at a disadvantaged position, I think uh, the CBN will still want to leave this at those levels, and it should be key to what happens in the fixed income market. All of right. Course, liquidity position is also uh, a very important uh, uh, consideration on this one. Philip Hanegbe, thank you so much for joining me on the program. Philip is a research analyst with ARM Securities. Thank you so much for your perspectives. Our well, Business Morning will be back after this. Welcome back. You're watching Business Morning on Channels Television. Closing moments now, of course, as we track developments across uh, the economy. And the most interesting and trending story at this time, of course, is the MPC two-day rate setting meeting, which ends today by 2.30 p.m. or about 2.45 p.m. We should get to know what their decisions are with regards to the rates. But uh, the general consensus is that the Monetary Policy Committee will keep rates on change. We have Monetary policy rate at 14% since July, and that was the uh, status quo at its meeting in September. We also have the CRR at 22.5%, the liquidity ratio at 30%, and the asymmetric uh, ratio at plus 200 and minus 500 basis points. Uh, around the monetary policy rate. But uh, the conversations uh, today, of course, have has focused on major developments that will be reviewed by the Monetary Policy Committee, including a latest GDP number uh, from the National Bureau of Statistics that was released yesterday, further contraction 2.24%, and as well as uh, development in the uh, foreign exchange market. And... Uh, other global issues as well. But let's take a look at how the markets are shaping up this morning. That's the Nigerian equities market. Let's talk to Rotimi Fakaijo, who's an equities trader and uh, CEO of Enterprise Stock Brokers. So good morning to you, Rotimi. Good morning, Harriet. It's great to have you join me on the program. So uh, for you, what, 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 what are investors uh, keeping a track of this morning? What's driving investors' sentiments at the market? What are you keeping your eye on? Ah, well, uh, for the market, for what the market is right now, it's 0.07% uh, negative. But for us as traders, uh, we, we are really not expecting anything positive to the equity market as the outcome of the MPC meeting today. Because uh, we, we are hearing that uh, since inflation rate is over 18%, that interest rate may not come down. So invariably, the money market remains an attraction to investors. So I think uh, we'll continue to do what we are doing in the market and that uh, we are really not expecting of any major change that may impact positively on the uh, equity market. Well, the market has continued. Market turnover has continued to thin out. We saw a value and volume coming in pretty, pretty low at the end of Monday's trading session. Take us through what actually uh, you expect will impact um, the markets for today, particularly the key sectors that will drive the market or maybe not drive it? Uh, well, uh, to me, I believe um, uh, on the positive side, we may see the, um, the consumer goods actually impacting on the market. On the negative side, we may see the uh, banking sector stocks actually uh, coming uh, in that direction. But for, uh, for what we've seen so far this morning, the consumer goods sector is actually defining the, uh, the value of the trading that has uh, taken place this morning. We've seen over 373 million Naira value traded. And I think uh, what we've seen is that uh, Nigerian dealers is actually stopping the uh, value chart. So I think uh, for today, we it's most likely that um, that definitely will be the direction to go. So the uh, consumer goods sector, and maybe possibly the uh, uh, industrial goods, will actually shift the market today. I don't really see a situation whereby the uh, the music spree in the market will continue today. We'll be seeing it uh, gradually diminishing. And I think uh, today we may just definitely trade flat or uh, maybe trade up uh, uh, marginally. All right, Rotimi, just before I let you go, let's uh, just you know spend th about 30 seconds or 45 seconds to talk about oil and gas stocks, and then we'll wrap up this conversation. We've seen oil and gas stocks, uh, some of them listed on the Nigerian Stock Exchange, under pressure in the last couple of trading sessions. Do you expect that to continue today, and what actually is contributing to this pressure? 
And well, I think uh, Forty Oil is the most capitalized stock uh, uh, among the among the oil and gas sector. So, and uh, we've been seeing the price of that stock coming down. Yesterday it was stable, and I think today it remains stable or goes up. Then definitely the change, the idea, positive change in the oil, in the oil and gas sector in sectoral index. Thank you so much, Rotimi, for wrapping that up really nicely for us this morning on the program. Rotimi Fakaijo is an equities trader and CEO of Enterprise Top Brokers, giving us a sense of where the market is. And, of course, just to quickly remind you, today is a decision day of the Monetary Policy Committee. Their decision will be announced sometime after 2.30 p.m. And Channels Television is going to be given a live coverage of that particular event. We've got a live pre-MPC uh, analysis starting from about 1.48 48 p.m. and Post MPC analysis at about 3 p.m. lined up with a panel from the nation's capital with Channel's Business News editor Bosno Mofaya. You can also follow this particular event live on any of our social media platforms. But that's it on today's edition of the program. Many thanks for spending time with us. I'm Harriet Agbini. Have a profitable day.